And it's time in Spotlight Ukraine to break Russian fakes. And to do this, we invite our partners from Stop Fake. They are working 24-7 to tell all the world the truth about what is really happening in Ukraine and about all the crimes Russian are, Russians are committing in our country. And right now, I am joined by Ruslan Deynichenko, Executive Director of Stop Fake. Ruslan, greetings and thanks for joining. Hello, Yuri. Okay, let's turn uh, immediately to our first fake. For the second month in a row, pro-Kremlin pro propaganda has been spreading a fake about the golden Rolls Royce of the head of National Bank of Ukraine. The luxury car was allegedly bought with money provided by the international partners. Our journalists will tell you what kind of uh, super car it is and who actually owns it. A photo of a golden Rolls Royce at the entrance to the National Bank of Ukraine first appeared in pro-Kremlin media in late March. Citing unnamed publicists, the propagandists claimed that the luxury car belonged to the NBU governor Andriy Pishny. According to the local publics, the owner of the luxury cars, the head of the National Bank of Ukraine, Andriy Pushny, is standing next to the car. According to Ukrainian media, his car is constantly seen near the NBU, and he enters through the checkpoint. The NBU officially denied that the car belonged to Andriy Pishny on social media. Additionally, in a comment to Stop Fake, the owner of the Rolls-Royce was reported to have parked illegally near the bank and gone to have coffee. He received a warning from the security guards and left afterwards. The car is not owned or used by any NBU employee. Since the photo shows the license plate, it will not be difficult to identify the owner. Despite being refuted, propagandists continue to spread the fake. Recently, a video was posted on Telegram channels showing Andriy Pishny allegedly speeding away in a Rolls Royce, accompanied by a motorcade. The video was published when Pishny was at a meeting of the IMF and the World Bank in Washington, the NBU said. As for the golden Rolls Royce, it probably belongs to Henadi Vatsak, a member of the Vinnytsia Regional Council and businessman. This car within his elite fleet is mentioned by two Ukrainian publications, Top Zhir and Tvoya Mashina. The place of the last registration of the car is Vinnytsia region, and the date is February 2022, seven months before Andriy Pishny became the head of the NBU. So, Ruslan, as far as I understand, this fake is uh, spread by Russian propaganda for quite a long time, for two months, I think. Is it because uh, people don't really believe it or uh, this is too important topic for Russian propaganda? Well, uh, the more you repeat, the more people will, will be exposed to this disinformation and the more people will trust it. And I think this exact fake... Uh, target is a Ukrainian population, first of all. Uh, our Russian uh, partners, uh, they want to persuade Ukrainians that their government betrayed them. And when we all collect uh, money and to, to, in order to help our army, our government officials, they spent uh, huge money to buy such a, such a car. Well, the more they repeat this fake, the more we uh, break this fake together with you. But uh, are they successful in uh, spreading this kind of fakes? Unfortunately, uh, in this case, they have uh, kind of uh, friends inside of Ukraine. Some Ukrainian politicians uh, help Russian propaganda to promote this uh, disinformation and this fake. Uh, we don't know why. We don't know the reason. I assume some, some, someone just got payment for that or have their, their own uh, political interest. Uh, but uh, we should be aware that uh, sometimes uh, uh, Ukrainian politicians or uh, people inside Ukraine uh, help intentionally or unintentionally to promote Russian disinformation. Oh, I see. Okay, let's turn to our second fake. The British are allegedly predicting the defeat of NATO and Ukrainian armed forces because of the Russian tank Armata. 
uh, another sensation of Russian propaganda, and this is sensation. Let's take a look on, at what the UK media actually says about the Russian tanks being uh, touted by Russia. Referring to random comments under an article of the British website Daily Mail, Russian propaganda created another sensational fake. Daily Mail readers predict the defeat of NATO and the Ukrainian armed forces because of Russian Armata tanks in the area of the eastern Ukraine. Watch out NATO because in the end you might get a nosebleed from this news, said the pain list. The original article on the Daily Mail's website, titled Putin sends his invisible T-14 Armata tanks into battle for the first time in Ukraine, after UK says using poorly maintained fleet is high risk for Russia, is skeptical of the supposedly devastating Russian tanks. Production is probably only in the low tens, while commanders are unlikely to trust the vehicle in combat, the British military said. The T-14 would also pose a logistical headache for Russia, as it is larger and heavier than other Russian tanks. The publication emphasizes that these tanks are primarily used for Russian propaganda purposes and not as effective combat vehicles on the battlefield. So, Ruslan, it's kind of strange fake, to be honest. Uh, they could have found something uh, uh, more serious than Russian tank Armata, because uh, it's not yet available in Ukraine and even broke during one of the parades on uh, Red Square in Moscow. But obviously, this article was uh, audited or even written by the Russians. Uh, but why? What is the main reason? Well, I think the uh, primary audience for this fake was a uh, Russian audience. And uh, uh, Russian propaganda and Kremlin wants uh, Russians to know that uh, billions of dollars were not spent or stolen by uh, Kremlin officials. And uh, these uh, wonderful weapons uh, that they are uh, praising, the Russia really ha has. And uh, they use this approach when the uh, Russian propagandists, uh, they uh, leave uh, comments on some uh, foreign um, website or newspaper, and then they represent that this is the opinion of uh, British public or American public or German public. It was a, a very popular meme when uh, uh, Bulgarian all the time, the, the Bulgarian praised uh, something produced in Russia, Russian cars, Russian tanks, Russian weapons, and so on and so on. Ruslan, you said Russians believe this is wonderful weapons, and I like it. Okay, let's turn to our third uh, fake for today, and it will be last fake for today. The Kremlin media claim that Kyiv is allegedly going to seize or destroy nuclear power plants located on the territory of Russian Federation. In support of this announcement, uh, the former first deputy commander of the Special Operation Forces of uh, Armed Forces of Ukraine, Serhii Krivonos, was quoted on one of the Ukrainian TV channels. Let's see what the military officer actually said. Kyiv militants may respond to the seizure of Zaporizhia NPP by Russian troops by attacking nuclear facilities in Russia, Regnum News Agency writes, quoting Ukrainian Major General Serhii Krivonos. They also have nuclear power plants, and in some respects, it is easier not to liberate Zaporizhia NPP, but to capture or disable a nuclear power plant in Russia. They also have nuclear power plants, and in some respects it is easier not to liberate the Parisian nuclear power plant, but to capture or disable a nuclear power plant in Russia. To create this fake, the propagandists used an interview with Serhii Krivonos, former first deputy commander of the Special Operation Forces of the AFU, to the Ukrainian Channel 5. Among other things, the host asked about the Zaporizhia NPP. In answering, the expert suggested. Could, for example, the Special Operation Forces theoretically liberate such an object, or it's too dangerous? This is all about theory, just a theory. 
In answering, the expert suggested. If the issue is raised and the task is properly set and the risk are properly weighed, then we can also save their nuclear power plant. Because in war, if you blackmail us, we will not be gentlemen and turn the other cheek. After all, Krivonos is not an official and was interviewed as a military expert. But with such fakes, the Russians are trying to show that we are the aggressor, threatening global security, and not they. Ruslan, what is the main target group for this fake? Why are they spread? I mean, why are Russian propagandists are spreading this fake? Well, I think that uh, the Russian population and uh, foreigners uh, first of all, Europeans are uh, primary audience for this disinformation. And uh, we can understand why. Uh, first of all, a Russian uh, propaganda want to persuade Russians that Ukraine is a real threat for them. And of course, uh, Russian propaganda is interested to, to scare Europeans. Europeans um, don't like that... Uh, uh, these nuclear threats are on the on European borders, and uh, that's why Russians all the time, when uh, European countries or the United States uh, make the announcement about uh, military support to our country, uh, Russian propaganda uh, threats with uh, nuclear weapons, nuclear strikes, and uh, uh, nuclear uh, stations uh, that might be seized by Ukraine. So I think the Russians and uh, Europeans are the among primary target of uh, this disinformation. But my last question would be as follows. Who are more scared, Russians or Europeans, to your mind? I think both of them. But fortunately, Europeans understand uh, uh, the how Russian propaganda works much better than Russians, and they have another sources of information. So we hope that they will never stop supporting Ukraine. Okay, thank you, Ruslan, for all the work you are doing, and thank you for the work of uh, Stop Fake. As I told at the beginning of our conversation, that Russian propaganda works 24/7. Stop fake works 24-7 easy so that all the world knows the truth about what Russians are doing in Ukraine, about all their crimes they are committing on our territory. This was Ruslan Deynichenko, executive director of Stop Fake. This is Spotlight Ukraine. More to come. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Latest news, trends, and analytics on all about Ukraine. Like, share, and subscribe. Any questions, proposals, and comments, contact us via email.